Good Sunday morning. Welcome to Space Coast Christian Fellowship. We're happy to be back together in the house of the Lord to worship and praise and celebrate. God is doing an amazing work in this world and in our lives. And as we come and and give Thanksgiving and we remember our thanks living sermon a couple weeks ago, we need to be giving thanks always and often. So let's just give God a hand clap of praise as we come into his house. God is amazing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is doing so much for you. God's even at work when you don't know it, when we don't know it, because God is so faithful and so so caring. He's already on the case before you ever usher up a prayer. So we have that kind of God that's that kind of amazing, that's, that knows our predicaments, our problems, and is already at work to take care of them. So we have nothing to worry about. We can have all the hope we need, and we can have peace, peace that passes all understanding. Let's just go to the Lord, and let's continue to give thanks and praise. Oh, dear Lord, we thank you. We praise you. Oh, you are so amazing. Lord, your grace is amazing. You are you are amazing. Your work, you, you just come and work in our lives, not always in the way we want, but in the way we need. And, and you care for us. You're working to clean us up and put us back together again. And Lord, we can call ourselves works in progress, a masterpiece in the making. We can put all these, these titles on ourselves but without you, I, I don't know or even where to say where we'd be. But Lord, we thank you and praise you that you cared enough to come and be with us. As we think about your, your coming into this world, as we think about what you did on that first Christmas where you were born in human flesh, you gave up all your godly powers, all your God, God-like presence and position to become like us so that you can actually know and understand our hurts, our aches, our pains, our situations, our circumstance, that you know so well what we need. And Lord, you give it to us. And we give you praise and thanks that you always give us what we need. You never fail us nor forsake us. So Lord, we are here to worship you because we know forever you are faithful. Forever, Lord, and that is a mighty long time. So we give thanks and praise, and we celebrate with worship and thanksgiving. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah and amen. amen. Let's worship together. Please stand for worship if you're able. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. Love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. With a mighty hand and outstretched arms, His love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, His love endures forever. Sing praise. Forever God is strong, forever God is with us, forever, forever. From the rising to the setting sun, His love endures forever. By the grace of God we will carry on. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is strong. Forever God is with us. Forever, forever God is with us, forever God is strong, forever God is faithful, forever, forever, forever. Yes. Thank you, God. Thank 
you, Jesus. God is faithful forever. Thank you, Jesus. I've heard about this baby boy who came to earth to bring us joy. And I just want to sing this song to you. It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift. With every breath I'm singing hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. A couple came to Bethlehem, expecting child. They searched the inn to find a place for you were coming soon. There was no room for them to stay, so in manger filled with hate, God's only Son was born, oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The shepherds left their flocks by night to see this baby wrapped in light. A host of angels led them all to you. It was just as the angels said, you'll find a man, a manger bed, Emmanuel and Savior. Shone bright up in the east to Bethlehem. The wise men three came miles and journey, miles and miles for you. And to the place at which you were, their frankincense and golden mirth, they gave to you and cried out, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I know you came to rescue me. This baby boy would grow to be a man and one day die for me and you my sins would drive the nails in you that rugged cross was my cross too still every breath you drew was hallelujah Jesus.
the more I seek you. The more I find you. The more I find you. The more I love you. I wanna sit at your feet, drink from the cup in your hand, lay back against you and breathe, feel your heart beat. This love is so deep, it's more than I can stand. I melt in your peace, it's overwhelming Lord, I seek your peace. I seek you, Lord. The more I seek you, the more I find you. The more I find you, the more I love you. Let's sing that again. The more I seek you, the more I find you. The more I find you, the more I love you. I want to sit at your feet, drink from the cup in your hand, lay back against you and breathe, feel your heart beat. This love is so deep, it's more than I can stand. I melt in your peace, it's overwhelming. I want to sit at your feet, drink from the cup in your hand. Lay back against you and breathe, feel your heart beat. This love is so deep, it's more than I can stand. I melt in your peace, it's overwhelming. The more I seek you, the more I find you. The more I love you, the more I love you. The more I find you, the more I love you. Amen, amen. I invite you to be seated if you can. After that worship, I, I don't know. I, if I had to sit down, I don't think I could right now after that worship. Amen, amen. God is God is on the move. God is doing amazing work. Amen. Amen. And the more we seek him, the more we find him. How well are you seeking him? We we need we need uh, some help many a days. Anyone ever had those moments where you just can't find what you're looking for? Yeah. It seems like the older we get, the harder it, 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 or more often it happens. Uh, Something speaking so pastor true. about the more things happen. Uh, you know how sometimes you forget to turn your mic on? Is it off? No. Nope. Oh, okay. This time I, for all of worship, I did not have my guitar on. You heard it here, folks. We heard it here first, so I'm not alone. I'm never alone. Amen. We're never alone. 
Amen. Amen. God is God is so good. Amen. You know we're we're a, we're a people. We're, we are we're fa we're fascinated by light. We really are. People love to see the sun rises. And they love to see the sunsets. They love to see the eclipses. Some people drive across the country to see an eclipse. I mean, it's like you know, people just want to see these spectacles of light. We're captivated by light even. But have you ever realized how much light we do and don't have? Have you ever looked up at the stars? If you're in the city, it's like it's nothing like getting out in the middle of the, of the wilderness, out in the desert or out on the sea. Without lights around you, you can see more stars. You're like, I didn't even know we had that many stars the first time that happened to me. I thought those books were lying all those years. Uh, no, but it's like, I mean, but, but we need some real light in our lives. I mean, can you imagine light without light, a uh, life without light? Can you imagine it? Where would we be? We'd be stumbling in the dark, each and every one of us. We'd just be losing our way. Uh, uh, and, and think about the evolution of, of light and what we have today. Think about the days when you only had a candle. I don't know about you, but if I was reading by candle to study at, at late at night, it's like I would have given up and gone to bed. It was just isn't enough light compared to what I'm used to. We got great floodlights that they can fill the night sky. We, we, got, we got all these advancements and lights and technology there. And, I, and you know that they're on some cars when they're coming at you and you're like, where's my sunglasses when I need them? Uh, I mean, seriously, it's like light is, is so, so necessary. And when we walk outside of the light, we are truly stumbling in the dark. And, and many of us come to church today in a place where we're stumbling in the dark. The light's all around us, but we're still stumbling in the dark. And why is that? It's a question we have to answer for ourselves. Why do we continue to stumble in the dark? Why do we continue to go down the paths that we're going? God is going to give us the path. God is going to show us the way. God is going to give us light for the journey. God is going to give us everything we need. And I think the biggest thing that we got to get, get hold of today in our Western society is surrender. We got, we got to learn how to surrender and let go of all our wants and wishes and our desires. We're still filled with what we want as opposed to what God will give us. We, we need to change who we are. As we talked last week, our scripture comes from Isaiah. And Isaiah is talking to a people, they've been beat down. I mean, as people, they were stumbling in the dark. We don't want to, we don't want to talk about stumbling in the dark, but, it, but if you just think back, uh, about 20 years. If you think back about 20 years in New York City, there were a lot of people stumbling in the dark about September 11 and 12 and 13. The, the, the light that they thought the city was giving them was gone. Absolute chaos rained down on our, on our culture, on our world, like we never thought possible. Many of us grew up in a place where wars were fought on foreign shores. Our homeland was sacred. And on that day, there were people not just in New York City. I mean, I remember myself in Ohio, and I was stumbling in the dark for a couple of days. It was, I was numb. I didn't understand. I was, I was overwhelmed. I was perplexed. My emotions were going crazy. I was, I was in the dark. I didn't know what to make of it. I didn't know what to think of it. And, I, and I'm listening to all the varied responses, the left wing and the right wing and the no wing. And it's like, I mean, it was... I mean, we, we got people giving you their opinions, and I, I mean, I'm trying to take it all in and make some sense of it. Some of you remember other uh, atrocities and happenings throughout the ages. And in those times, many of us stumble in the dark. And I want to tell you today that if this Christmas season you're stumbling in the dark, you don't have to continue. You do not have to continue stumbling in the dark. God is going to give us light for the passage. Well, well, those people, again, back in Isaiah's day, they were stumbling in the dark. They'd been beat down, kicked down, knocked down. They just didn't have a chance. They didn't see any hope. And Isaiah's trying to give them hope. They certainly didn't have any peace, but Isaiah was going to give them peace on that day. He wanted to give them a word, a glorious word of good news. And he did. And our scripture today comes from Isaiah 9, verse 2, one verse. Verse 2, the words are these, and these are God's words. 
the people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Those who live in a dark land, the light will shine upon them. And that is the Word of God for you, the people of God. God always gives us light for the journey. If you're not feeling light, I want to ask you if you're on the right path. I just want to ask you, if you don't feel like you have illumination, God's illuminating presence and guidance, are you on the right path? Are you walking in a way in a place that is your way and not God's way? Because when that happens, we don't have light. God isn't going to try to lead us somewhere He doesn't want us to be. God's going to give us light to take us in the right direction. And we got to understand, it's like God does not illuminate a six-year or 60-year plan. God's given us enough light for the day and the night and the day again. God gives us just what we need for the next step and the step after that. Imagine yourself, you're walking in the wilderness. Imagine you're walking yourselves, not, not in the plains or the flat land of Florida. I'm talking about walking in some cliffs, some mountains, where one step off the path and you may be going plumbing in and down and down and down. I don't know about you, but I want some light with me on that day. Yeah. I mean, I have taken trails in the day, in, in the daytime, and it's like you really, you literally take a step and, or two, and boom, you're done. You're going down, and it's a long way down. But God has given us what we need for the path. He's going to illuminate the journey. He's going to give us one step at a time. Our problem is we got our mind set on well. I got to retire well. Well, God, God's already got your retirement taken care of. If you're working, stop worrying about that. God's got you covered. Well, let's worry about the next step and the step after that. It's okay to have 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 a six month plan and a, and a six year plan, but it's like let's come on back. What are we doing about today? God doesn't tell you what you're going to do in six years. I mean, if you think about all the people in the Bible, if God would have told them what was going to happen in six years or or, or ten years or twenty years or forty years, they they had been like, oh, forget it. I can only imagine if God told Moses at some point he had said for 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 forty. 40 years in the world, forget it, I quit. I mean, if, if Moses knew that, he may have resigned the position before he got it. He said, I'm going to deal with these hard-headed people. i got 40 years stuck with them. Are you kidding me? I, I mean, I'm just thinking from my own perspective because I'm pretty sure I'd have been on that one too. I've been like, God, do you want me to? No, I don't think so, God. God gives us what we need for today. He always illuminates our path. He gives us a light that is not world light, but it's 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 God light. The world can make some light. We've talked about it. We got great floodlights that can fill the sky. We got lights on paths, but those paths are not always God's lights, a God's light, and we need to follow God. And what we need for Christmas is light for the journey. What we need beyond anything else is light for the journey. You, you need to stop worrying about what you're going to buy for the kids and the parents and the grandparents. Well, you got to stop worrying about what you're going to buy for the grandkids. You, you just got to stop and realize what the, what the world needs is light for the journey. If you could give someone, give, give, give those people you care about the most, what gift would you give them? If it isn't, if it isn't Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, then, you, then you're not giving them your best. You're not giving them your best because money cannot buy that. I mean, if you're thinking about buying someone a Mercedes, my name's Joel, J-O-E-L. You can put that on the title, and I'll say thank you. I'll say thank you very much. But it is not your best. You should be, you should be giving me Jesus. I'm hoping you think I already got him because I'm pretty sure I do. But, but the answer is, is like we should, be, we should be giving people that light, and that light's going to give people hope. And when people get hope, they can find some peace on this journey. And, and that's what this world needs today is some hope and some peace. And right now you don't get it. You turn on the, the, the evening news or the morning news or the anytime news, and you know what you get? More like, are you kidding me again? Why we got to do this? Well, okay, they said that. Oh, gee, many Christmas. Well, stop already. Let's turn the thing off. What we need is some light for this journey. We need to find that light that's going to give us the hope and peace we need. We all need hope and peace. We all need it very much. And we need to understand that God's going to give that to us. The psalmist told us in Psalm 119 and verse 105, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. 
God gives us the light we need. And when we walk in the light, you can find the hope and you can find the peace. And I got news for you. And when you're walking in the dark, you're stumbling. And when you're stumbling, you do not have hope. And when you're stumbling, you do not have peace. So this Sunday, again, we, we come and we light the candle of hope on our Advent wreath to remind us that we have hope in this world, that there is hope in the Lord Jesus Christ and the light of Christ that shines into our lives so that we don't have to continue to stumble in the dark. And today we light the candle of peace because we need a peace that passes all understanding. That's not a peace from the world. That's a peace from God. When we're trying to get a peace from the world, we're trying to put it together and make sense of it here so we got peace. Or make sense of it here so we got some peace. When we get it from God, we don't have to make sense of it. We know it. It's a done deal. And, and what we need is to find that illumination of Christ to guide us on the way. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. You know, get into your scripture. The best gift you can give yourself today is, is to make get a reading plan and get into it. Get into it and don't give up on it. Read the Bible before you read the New York Times or the Florida Today if you're local. Get into the Bible before you turn on the news. Before you, before you put your coffee on, this is radical. Some of you ain't going to like this, Ren. Have a, have a little talk with Jesus before you put your coffee on. Why don't you have just a little talk with Jesus? We'll make everything right. I, someone should write a song about that. Maybe we'll sing it one day. We need to understand that the, that the light of God comes from His Word and from His presence. We can't forget that. We can't neglect that. we got to grasp hold of that. It is the way to lead us to life. It's that narrow path that God's got us on. It's a narrow path. One step off and we're falling. One step off and we're tripping up and we're stumbling in the dark. And folks, I know it's because I've walked that way before. I, I walked away where I got off the path and I got into, into the darkness and I was stumbling. I can look back now and I can see. You know, they say hindsight's twenty twenty. I, I couldn't see then, but I could look back now and I could say I was stumbling. I was stumbling in the dark. But God, I love this, but God, but just changes everything, doesn't it? But God took me out of my darkness and gave me a light. God gave me a light and brought me back. And and it's and I'm st I mean, just because I'm a pastor don't mean I'm not prone to misstep. I mean I've admitted I I mean there's times I'm trying to do what God I'll do God I'm like well God yeah but this is gonna be a great joke I want to tell it it's funny and God's going like just hush already kid just shut up just let it go okay he's gonna not call me kid anymore but he's still he's like but God's just going just hush and we we need to we we need we need to understand that it's like no matter who we are. Stumbling in the dark is just one step away. We need the light that shines into darkness that's going to pull us back in. And I got news for you, folks. I got news for you. If you think you got to wait to die to get a taste of heaven, someone lied to you. Because the kingdom life is here and now. But I got news. I knew another news flash for you. Some, some people in this world today, maybe some people sitting in churches on this day, maybe, maybe it's you, maybe it's someone you know, they don't have to wait to die to go to hell. They're already there because they're stumbling in the dark. Because they're trying to do life without God. They're trying to do life without, without the fellowship of believers. They're trying to do life without praise and worship. They're trying to do life to be a good person. And society, society will tell you that. There's people out there tell you, well, I'm a good person. I'm good enough. And I'm saying, no, you're not. I'm going to be the brick. I'm going to be the bull in the china shop. Tell you, no, you're not. That's a lie from the pit. You got lied to. Get your money back. You stumbling in the dark. I, I mean, we can, we know people that are there. And when I was stumbling in the dark, I didn't have to wait to die to go to hell. I was in hell. I just didn't know it. I Again, I can put my glasses on looking back, and I, I don't need glasses to look back. I, I got 2020 behind me. I know where I was. And, and I know that that's, but I know that, and I know that about people. That There's people we know that they don't have to wait to die to go to hell. They think their life's over because they got a situation, a circumstance, a predicament, a problem, and it's too great for God. And they've given up on God. You do realize that, realize that worry is, is the, it, it's just the ab absolute worst thing we can do. Why? It's saying we don't trust God. That's what worry tells us. Worry says, I don't trust God. If your doctor tells you something, do you have confidence? 
if your counselor tells you something, do you have confidence? If God tells you, do you have confidence? We need to, we need to, because that's the light God gives us. Jesus now came and he lived amongst us. Jesus came and he gave us this word. This comes recorded by the Gospel of John in chapter 8. Jesus spoke again saying, I am the light of the world. He and she who follows me will not walk in the darkness. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the way we need to walk. It's the only way. It's the only light for the journey. It's what we need. It's what we need as much as inhale and exhale. And by the way, if you can do life without inhale, exhale, come and tell me. I'd love to hear it. But I, I'm still stuck in that inhale, exhale. And I'm still in a place where I need the light of the world. Jesus, the light of the world to lead me every step of the way. Because when we get light for the journey, we have light of life. And I do want to remind you that not all lights are equal. And, and some lights can even be dangerous. I remember years ago, we got these laser pointers and people were pointing them at each other. And it's like you try not to get shot in the eye with the laser. Well, well, that was a light, wasn't it? And people were getting injured by it. Well, the light that God gives us is a light not, not to injure us or to, to damage us or destroy us. It's a light to what gives life. The light of God gives life. God is always life-giving. God created the world and created you and me. And God is at work recreating the world and you and me. That's why God says, I'm making all things new. I am making all things new. And when you read that, that means if, if you're struggling with cancer, what's God doing? He's making all things new. And that cancer is part of the old. is going to go away. We're going to find hope and peace in Christ. Why? Because that light is life-giving. It's recreating within us. If you're struggling with emotional challenges, you're stumbling in the dark. Guess what? Life-giving. The light is life-giving. We get freedom in Jesus Christ. You get bondage by the world's light, but you get freedom in God's light. We don't have to do anything to earn the light. God gives it to us for free. That's why we celebrate and we light Advent candles to point the way to what? Christ. Advent is a preparation for what the celebration would already happen, and it is happening. The Christ presence in the world. And we need that Christ light presence in our lives. That's why light is so important. I mean, I want to encourage you. It's like if you do nothing else, you don't have to get an Advent wreath. You don't have to go out and spend money to do this. Get a candle. Just go to go to Walmart. Go to Target. I'm going to get in trouble because I didn't mention some store. But it, it, go to Bath and Body Works and buy their, their fancy candles because they own special. Okay, I got my advertisements in. Thank you. Everyone should be happy now. But go get a candle. And light a candle. And just light a candle. And it's like... And it, you know, this isn't, there's no, no hocus pocus, but light a candle and tell yourself this is the light of Christ. To remind yourself you're in the presence of Christ. Maybe, maybe it's something you need to do for your devotional time because light is life giving. Maybe you need to light the candle and you need to sit down and read the Bible. Do you remind yourself that Christ is with you? Because light is what always symbolic of God. God always illuminated the path. What did God do when he was leading the people out of bondage? Back in Moses' day, he what? Led the way by light, fire, light, light. Jesus came and he said, I am the what? Light of the world. I think we just read that. You want to read it again? John 8, verse 12. I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. That's why I say this is about the light of life, folks. This is the light that's going to give us life, that's going to take care of our every need, our every situation. God will illuminate the path so we know which way to go. And when God brings that recreating light into us, you know how God works? I don't know. If you know, tell me. But what I do know is who works is God. I love it. I love the fact that we've seen some, some miracles celebrated. I love it when we pray over somebody and they say, you know what, I got set free in Jesus' name in the here and now. And we celebrate because it's a miracle. It's something happening extraordinary. But we don't have we don't celebrate when the when the patient goes through surgery and goes through medical treatments and is declared cancer free. We don't celebrate with the same enthusiasm. 
Not all of us. Some of us are wanting to thank the doctors and the hospitals and the pharmaceutical companies that make the, make the meds. There are people out there that go that way, but it's like all the healing is through who? God. We cannot heal. We don't have that ability. When we read the book of Acts, how many miracles happen by common, ordinary people? And the answer is none. They're all God. It's a trick question, y'all. So, so good. Th so, since y'all y'all didn't pass the first test, we got a second sermon coming for you in Jesus' name. Well, we're gonna get this miracles 101 after this sermon. No, seriously, the the a whole book of Acts. There's all these common, ordinary people that got turned extraordinary by the amazing presence of God filling them, empowering them, equipping them. And you know what happened when they tried it on their own? It didn't work. It never works. It works when we are empowered by the light of God that gives us the strength we need. It's the light that shines in us, folks. You know how you you know how you really want to get over the stuff that's killing that's breaking you down is not because you get a good counselor or a good doctor, it's because you get a good relationship with God. The light shines in you, and you can start to clean out the mess that's in you. I don't know about you, but I still got work to do. I need some more light. Because God is shining into our lives to illuminate what we need to do to change and grow. He is illuminating our path so we know where to go, what step to take, so we don't step in it. Some of us have stepped in it. Some of us come in and we smell like we stepped in it, like we've been out in a cow pasture. It happens. Why? Because we weren't following the light. So we got to get back to that place where we got to follow the light and let the light change us. And when we get there, we can share the light. And that's what the Christmas season's all about, isn't it? We like to talk about giving gifts. If you think about it, why do we have Black Friday and Cyber Monday and Giving Tuesday? And I don't know what they got for Wednesday, but they got something else coming up there. I mean, it's like, and we're going to continue this this bombardment of advertisement. Why? Because because people like to give gifts. And the best gift we can give is the light of Christ that gives hope and the hopeless and peace to the people that are restless, the people that don't know how to respond. And Jesus even told us that. If you don't believe me, check this out. Matthew 5, verses 14 to 16. You are the light of the world. And we don't need to read anything else. What does it say? You, you, you can, look, I don't care if you want to call that use or you want to say use singular. You are the light of the world. Y'all, use, utes, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. We got to let the light shine. We got to let the light radiate. When we hear someone that's broken and, tra and, and struggling, it's like, I mean, we got to give them some light. Because we are the light that Christ has shine, that shines into the world. It's not our best, it's God shining through us. I mean, as we've been studying, um, as a group, we've been studying uh, Francis Chan's Forgotten God, and it's like, and he, he makes a statement in there, and I, I don't have it in front of me, but he makes a statement and says, you know, he doesn't want people to, to see what just what he can do. And I'm pretty sure that Francis Chan is talented. I mean, I've read several of his books. I think he does a good job. He's a good author. I really believe he's a follower of Jesus Christ, that, he, that he's really trying to shine the light. But he, but he says, I don't want people to see what I can do because of my own accomplishments. I want God to, I want people to see what God's doing and what only God can do. We, we need to be a people that are ready to share the light, but that means we got to step out. We just can't blend in with the next Christmas tree. We got to blind them with the light. We, we really need to let them be blinded by the light. Dave, maybe write a song about that for me sometime. Oh, Lord, help us. Let's get back on track. We, but that's the kind of light. All right, Dave's going to put some words to that one here one day. No, but uh, yeah, it's squirrel true. But that's the kind of sharing that we have to have. I mean, we, we want to be the people that are the city set on the hill that's, that's the, the, the light in the midst of the storm. Because there's people that are stumbling in the dark. They don't know where to go. You know, I, I think of it this way. It's like we are, we're like ships at sea. You know why they put lighthouses in in certain places? So ships don't run aground. They don't, they don't hit this area that they yeah. really shouldn't hit. It's not going to be a good situation. It's called a what? A lighthouse.
house. We should be a lighthouse for the world. That's what Christians are supposed to be. We're supposed to be the light that points people to Christ. That's why Jesus said, you are the light of the world. We need to go share the light. It's a gift we have to give away. It's the gift. And yet we're all like, oh, isn't that going to be a cute gift for so-and-so? Oh, that's just going to be special. Be so practical. We got to shine the light. We got to shine the light in the dark. And that some of the people are going to be like, oh, man. Because you ever been in the dark? And the lights come on, and you're like, oh, keep doing that for. So we got to understand that's going to happen with some people. But we don't turn the light off. That would be that would be doing them a disservice. That's going to let them continue to stumble in the dark. What we need to do is we need to turn the light on, and we need to help them get adjusted to it. Tell them why the light is so important, and the light is very important. The light's amazing. The light is life-giving and life-changing. So I want to encourage you on this Christmas to do what Isaiah would tell the people in Isaiah 60. And he said, Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. That's what Christmas is all about. The light of the world has come into the world. God is not a God somewhere out there watching from the midst of the cosmos. I don't know where that is because I know God's right here with us. We didn't have to pray this morning to invite God in because God was already here. The lights were already on when we got here because that's how God does. We, we, didn't, have, we didn't have to plug in the Christmas tree because there was enough illumination in here to, to, to flood the room. God was here god is amazing and what we need to do is realize that it's our turn and our opportunity to arise and shine the glory of the lord has risen upon you what we need for christmas is more light in our lives i'll be honest i need more light in my life every time i'm thinking about what my next sermon series is i'm saying god illuminate me illuminate the path you want me to take and it's easy, it's easy to get caught up and say, well, that's the spiritual life of a pastor. But, and the answer is that's what we all need. But, but it's not just, it's not just, it's, it's God, what, what devotion book do you want me to read this year? God, what study book can I read to change my life that's going to that's gonna lead me back to what? Thy word that's a lamp unto our feet. There's lots of good books to help us on the journey. You want to do a Bible study, then, then God, what light? Shine the light. Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? We, we need that light, but it's our opportunity to arise and shine. It's our opportunity to stop stumbling in the dark. Stumbling in the dark, no more. That's what we all need for Christmas. The Advent candles are nice. The Christmas tree is nice. But it's no comparison to the light. Think about the Christmas story for a moment. We just sang a little bit ago, and so unless these lyrics are wrong right here, it says, a star shone bright up in the east to Bethlehem, the wise men three. What was it? A light. What about the, what about the shepherds? They what? Did they, did they see any light? I mean, I'm just checking. Maybe your Bible's different than mine. I just wanted to double check. Light is, is so important to life. How well do plants grow without light? Let me just ask you that. Take your plants, put them in a dark, dark, a totally dark room. Put a sprinkler in that room. You're going to have some, some home repair work to do after that. But put a sprinkler on so they get plenty of water. How do you think those plants are going to do? You think it's going to work? So why do we think we can go through life without the light of Christ illuminating our path? That's what I want to ask you today. Why do some days we, we feel like we need to put our sunglasses on because the light's a little bright? When that happens, God's leading you to a healing point in your life where you can grow. And you have the option to either put the glasses on and just work through it 
as best you can, but you're still stumbling in the dark or you either take and look into the light so you can grow like a plant and you can blossom and grow into the masterpiece God is creating you to be. Remember, we, what's the church point of the church is what? To change the world? That's what the body of believers did in the book of Acts. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, ours is no different. But let change begin with you. You don't have to stumble in the dark, friends. You can walk in the light. And I'm going to pray that you're even blinded by the light in the days to come. That you'll have such an awakening presence with Christ that you, all the problems will be gone. You'll stop stumbling. You stop worrying about all the people you worry about, all the concerns you have, because you're, you're set free in Jesus' name. We'll be singing, my chains are gone. I've been set free. Because it's like we know we got the light. It's amazing. I'm going to pray a, a closing prayer, and then I'm going to invite you if you need to pray. If you need, if you need to, to have some light in your life, if you need some light to overcome the stuff that's holding you down, it's like seek out seek out the person in your life that can pray for you. You certainly used to pastor. I have no problem praying for people. Maybe it's a person sitting next to you or across from you or near you that you need to lay your hands on and pray for. Because it's like, who, who's anybody who's got the light of Christ in and what can you give the light of Christ? Yeah. So we all got an opportunity to do what? Give the gift of life, the gift of light in Jesus' name. Lord, we do give you thanks and praise that you are the light of the world and that you are the light of life and that we can arise and we can shine. Lord, that doesn't mean we're not going to have problems, but it means we have a light to get through it and to work through it and to grow through it. Because your light will shine into the places where we need to change so we can grow. And we say thank you, Jesus that we don't have to continue to stumble in the dark and be lost and broken and hurting and struggling. We don't have to listen to the diagnosis of the doctors and say, well, I guess that's all there is because we know there's more. We know healing and health and wholeness are available in Jesus' name. And that's light that shines in our life that gets us cleaned up and breaks chains and conquers demons. It's the light that will set you free if only you'll open your eyes and work through it. Lord, I pray that lives will be changed around the world today not just in this church, but in churches all around the world, in places of all types all around the world. People going into restaurants will be blinded by the light of Christ through someone. That people will overcome the stuff that's holding them down, keeping them stumbling in the dark. Because that is the greatest gift that we need it's light, and you give it to us, dear Lord, and we thank you. Come and walk with us. Come and work within us. Shine your light. Shine your light, Lord, that we can clean it up and be set free from the mess and grow. That we don't have to say we're common and ordinary anymore, but we know that we're extraordinary because we're living in the light. We're your children. We praise you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Again, if you have a prayer need, come and pray. Let's celebrate. I give my heart, I give my trust to Thee.
Lord, I have faith in you, my God. Letting go of my fears seems so hard. Till you brought me close and I heard you say, I give you peace. I leave you peace on this day. Peace of Christ, rule in my heart. You are the miracle in me, making my fears unjustified. I give my heart, I give my trust to Thee. Peace, O oh God, transcends all understanding. Let me not be troubled or afraid. Your peace, O oh God, transcends all understanding. Let me not be troubled or afraid. I'll follow the path that you have made. Peace of Christ, be the light in my heart. You are the miracle in me, making my fears unjustified. I give my heart, I give my trust to Thee. Your peace, O oh God, transcends all understanding. Let me not be troubled or free. The peace, O oh God, transcends all understanding. Let me not be troubled or free. To follow the path that you have made. Peace of Christ, rule in my heart eternally. Amen. May you find that peace through Christ, the light of the world. May you find the peace that passes all understanding in this season of preparation that you'll just be able to press on in spite of knowing that the answers are at hand. We praise the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit on this day for His faithful presence as we look forward to the coming celebration of Christmas, God with us, Emmanuel, the light of the world, the need of every person of all times and places. And we say amen and amen. Facebook Live, we celebrate with you. If you have needs, send us a message. We'll be praying for you. We'll be working uh, on your behalf in prayer to take care of anything we can however we can, because we're here for you. You're part of our family. And we celebrate. As we go, I just want to encourage you that to uh, remember uh, we're looking for opportunities to serve every day and keep us in prayer too, because it's a two-way street. Always opportunities. But don't forget, send your praise reports back, because we want to celebrate. I mean, I, I've been known to say I'm going to quit taking prayer requests someday because it's like I'm like, because I'm tired of not hearing the praise reports. But, but in all sincerity, we do want to be able to celebrate the God who keeps on giving. So share the praise reports as well. And we're going to keep on living, keep on doing, keep on serving. So go forth and be blessed to be a blessing. 
And until we meet again so long, dear friends, with thanksgiving, we say hallelujah and amen.